we're going to snap the ball and then we're going to jump into replay mode and break this down. So we're snapping the ball, we're making our reads, delivering the ball downfield. Now did you catch what happened there? Let's jump into replay mode and look at this. Welcome back to XP Camps. We educate the next generation of athletes about sports through gaming. If you're looking to improve your football IQ this offseason or find an affordable way to support the content we do here at XP Camps, I recommend you check out our courses at xpcamps.com. Our courses break down over 200 real life concepts in Madden, so every time you load into the virtual gridiron, you're getting real life reps on concepts your coaches want you to learn. Become a better, smarter football player, guaranteed, and click the link down in the description to start training today. Now, let's jump back into the video. So the first thing you're gonna wanna take a look at in your pre-snap reads is the alignment of the safeties on the field. So with the safeties right now, we have a single high safety. So that means it can only be one of two coverages. It can either be a cover three zone or a cover one man. And the reason it can only be one of those two coverages is because those are the only two that have a single high safety. Now later in this section, I'll show you how you can tell the difference between a cover three zone and a cover one man. Alternatively, instead of a single high safety on the field, there can be two high safeties on the field, and it looks a little something like this. So now you can see on my screen, we have two high safeties on the field, and when you have them out there, it can either be a cover two zone, a cover four, a cover six, or a cover two man, and how you're gonna determine the difference between those coverages is based on the cornerback's alignment. So right now we can see our cornerbacks are sagged off of the line of scrimmage, Typically when they're sagged off the line of scrimmage like this, they're going to be in a cover four coverage because they're sagged off and they're gonna be in those deeper zones. And so that's what you see right now on my screen is them in this cover four coverage. Alternatively, these cornerbacks can be pressed up like this closer to the line of scrimmage. Now they can be in either a cover two or a cover two man because they're pressed up closer and they have to defend those flats or they're manned up on those outside receivers. So if they're sagged off, it's likely a cover four. If they're pressed up, it's likely a cover two or a cover two man. And then lastly, if you see this alignment where you have one cornerback sagging off and one cornerback pressed up closer to the line of scrimmage, they're most likely going to be in a cover six or a cover eight. And if you remember from our everything you need to know about zone coverages video, a cover six is essentially half of the field is a cover four coverage and the other half is a cover two coverage. So that's how you can tell what coverage zone wise they're going to be in. Now, I'll show you one other way the safeties may align before we can tell the difference between zone and man coverages. So the final safety alignment we can have is where we have zero deep safeties on the field and it looks a little something like this. So now, instead of having two high safeties, your safeties are gonna come press up towards the line of scrimmage and they're either gonna line up over a receiver or line up in the box like they are right here. And when you see zero high safeties on the field, it's a pretty good indicator that the defense is going to be aggressive and send extra blitzers at you. So whether it's the safeties blitzing you or it's the linebackers blitzing you and the safeties are covering the slot receivers, having zero high safeties on the field means that the defense is in a cover zero, which means they're gonna be more aggressive and send extra blitzers at the quarterback. So if you see this cover zero, just know you're gonna to have to get the ball out pretty quickly because the defense is sending extra defenders to try to sack the quarterback. Now, let's see how we can tell the difference between man and zone coverage. Now we're gonna learn how you can determine the difference between a man and zone coverage during your pre-snap reads. So if we look at the field right now, we have that single high safety. So it's either going to be a cover three zone or a cover one man. And the motion is going to help us determine the difference between the two. So I'm going to click onto Kelsey right here and motion him across the formation. Now you can see this defender follows Kelsey across the formation. And that's going to tell us that the defense is in a man coverage. The reason being is this player that's manned up on Kelsey can't stay on the opposite side of the formation because if we were to click onto him and show you, he's manned up on Kelsey. If we could look at the play art here, he's manned up on Kelsey like this. If he were to stay all the way over on this side of the formation, 
there would be no way that he's able to defend Kelsey well because he'd have to run all the way across the field in order to prevent Kelsey from catching the football. So if we were to just motion Kelsey into a little out route here while keeping those responsibilities, you can see there's no way that this player is able to get over to Kelsey in time to prevent him from catching the pass. So that's why in man coverage, when you motion a player across the formation, typically that player will follow if they are in man coverage like this. So that's a pretty easy tell that it's either going to be man or zone coverage. And I'll show you the opposite example really quick. So I'm going to put the defense now in a cover three. So they still have that single high safety, but now they're in this zone coverage. And if I were to motion Kelsey across the formation, now that safety is not coming with, and he's actually just going to shift over a little bit, but he's not going to follow Kelsey across the formation. So a pretty good indicator that they are in zone coverage and not man coverage. And then if we were to snap the ball, it just confirms what we read pre-snap, that it is in fact a zone coverage and not a man. So now let's look into our post-snap reads to make sure that we're confirming the things that we read pre-snap. If you're enjoying the content and want to continue improving your football IQ, check out our courses over at xpcamps.com. We offer fun, engaging, and affordable training aimed at making you a better, smarter football player, guaranteed. Let's jump back into the video. Once you've made those pre-snap reads, it's critical that you make post-snap reads in order to either confirm what you saw pre-snap or make adjustments based on what the defense is doing. Now, this is gonna become more important as you get to more advanced levels of football because the defense is going to start masking or hiding what they're doing pre-snap in order to make it difficult on the offense to know what they're running. So a perfect example is what we have right here. You can see on the field, we have those two high safeties with those two cornerbacks sagging off in coverage. And so if we were to motion Kelsey across the formation or MVS, you could see nobody's following him across the formation and nobody's even shifting. So they're probably going to be in a zone coverage. So if we were to move MVS back to where he was, now we're thinking, okay, we know that it's a zone coverage and based on their alignment pre-snap, it's most likely going to be a cover four coverage. Well, what you're going to want to do is first read the safeties to confirm those things. So we're going to snap the ball and then we're going to jump into replay mode and break this down. So we're snapping the ball, we're making our reads, delivering the ball downfield. Now, did you catch what happened there? Let's jump into replay mode and look at this. All right, so here we are in replay mode. Now, pre-snap, like I said, we had the two high safeties with the cornerback sagging off and we motioned and no one followed. So we're thinking that this is going to be a cover four zone. But once we snap the ball, number 31 bails out towards the middle of the field. And if we pause it here, now he's a single high safety and we have those outside cornerbacks sinking deep. This is actually a cover three coverage, even though pre-snap it looked like a cover four, but because we read the safeties, we saw this player bailing out and we know, okay, they're definitely in a zone because no one followed our wide receiver and they have a single high safety. This is going to be a cover three. And if you've seen some of our previous videos where we break down how to attack a cover three defense, the seams are typically going to be wide open. So that's how we were able to get this wide open pass off to Travis Kelsey in the seam is because we knew it was a zone coverage because no one followed on the motion. And we saw post snap that this single high safety started bailing to the middle of the field. And this other safety didn't sink. They actually just moved laterally. And now you can see they're in that purple zone, helping this underneath deep cornerback, which is uh, something that we break down in our everything you need to know about zone coverages video. So that's why it's critical that you read these safeties post snap is because defenses, especially at the more advanced levels, are going to try to hide what they're doing pre-snap in order to make it difficult on the quarterback. So if you see these two high safeties, just watch what they do after the snap in order to help you further make a decision on what coverage the defense might be in. In addition to reading the safeties and deep defenders post-snap, you're also going to want to look at the underneath defenders in this coverage in order to determine what kind of pressure is coming at you and how much time you have to go through your reads. So what I mean by that is if the defense sends four defenders to rush the quarterback, well, you have five offensive linemen, so you may have a little bit more time to read those deeper routes on the field and see how they progress. 
Now, if the defense is sending five or six or more defenders at you to try to sack the quarterback, well, then you can't read those deep routes and see how they progress because you won't have time and you're going to have to start reading those underneath routes in order to get the ball out quick and avoid getting sacked. So here's what this would look like. So I'm going to first motion Kelsey across the formation and we could see, all right, they're in man coverage and because that player followed us across the formation and they have a single high safety, so they're most likely going to be in a cover one man. And so once we snap the ball, we see that this single high safety stays there, but did you see what happened there? I'm gonna go into replay mode to break this down for you. All right, here we are in replay mode taking a look at this. So pre-snap, we sent Kelsey in motion across the formation, and this defender lined up over the top of him, followed him across the formation, so that told us that it was definitely going to be a man coverage. Then we read the deep safety here, and at the snap of the football, they just backpedaled straight back and are that single high safety. So that told us that they are in a cover one man. Now, the next thing that we have to do is read these underneath defenders and determine what kind of pressure is being sent at Mahomes because the pressure being sent at him will determine how we make our reads when we're reading our routes. Do we have the time to watch these deep routes progress downfield or do we have to get the ball out quick? Well, right now, they sent six people at the quarterback and we only blocked five. So you could see Fred Warner here had a free shot at Kelsey, or excuse me, at Mahomes for the sack. So with Mahomes, he doesn't have time to read Kelsey on this deep dig or MVS running this deep post route because the pressure is right in his face. If we look right here, these two deep routes didn't even get into their break. I mean, Kelsey started to break, but MVS hasn't even begun to break on his post route before the pressure had already gotten into Mahomes' face. So if you were only reading those deep defenders, you wouldn't even see this blitz coming. And so that's why it's crucial that post snap, you read the safeties to confirm that it is the zone, but you also need to quickly look at the pressure being sent at you. If you see that six people are coming at you, you need to get the ball out quick. Even if you block six, if any one of these players won their one-on-one -on -one matchup and got past their offensive linemen, then they're gonna have an easy sack on Mahomes. And so when you don't have a numbers advantage, when it's even or the defense sent more players than you're blocking, you need to get the ball out quick in order to try to avoid a sack. And so that's exactly what we do here. Fred Warner comes free and we just get the ball out to our running back in the flat is able to catch it and turn up field for about seven yards. But those are the reads that you would make post snap. It's first looking at those safeties and those cornerbacks to confirm that it's the coverage that you thought you read pre-snap. And then you need to look down in the box and see what kind of pressure is being sent at you because if additional blitzers are coming, you're gonna need to get the ball out quick in order to avoid a sack. If you found value in this content and you want to support us, make sure you drop a like and a sub and check out our courses. The link is in the description below. I'll catch you all in the next one.